Hey everyone, welcome back to Rose Stop. Oh, oh, we nearly said the wrong thing. <laughs> Can tell we're not used to the new intro yet. So let's try that again. Hey everyone, welcome back to Rose's Year of One. If this is your first time to my channel, my Year of One is a project that is replacing the fact that last year I went on a year long no buy. This year I am trying to reintroduce shopping and consuming back into my life, but in a controlled way that keeps it mindful, keeps it conscious and hopefully it's going to prevent it from being the problematic way that I used to spend before my no buy year. So if that kind of balanced, considered, consumer based content appeals to you, please do consider subscribing. Part of my project this year is that I am continuing my budget, which I also started last year. It has evolved a little bit this year and this is actually my first money diary video of 2021. So this is how I spent my budget in January 2021. Let's get on into it. Now, I don't think this will be a particularly long video. So January 2021, we have been in lockdown for the whole month. Obviously that has impacted on how I've been able to spend. It's restricted me from going places, spending money, eating out. So there's not as much to report on as hopefully there will be in future months once vaccines are rolled out and we're returning hopefully to some kind of normality but I still tracked everything I spent and I've still got thoughts and feelings about it so let's get into it. First of all I spent absolutely nothing on beauty services surprisingly because none of them would open. However I did spend on beauty service replacement items. On the second of the month I spent £40 which was on this kit here from Spotlight Whitening that's got a toothpaste so a whitening toothpaste in it and then it's also got two weeks worth of whitening strips in there. So that was £40 from Boots. Um, let me know if you'd be interested in a review of this. See like a before and after. I know a lot of bloggers work with this brand. So this is obviously completely me. I paid for it myself. So it would be, if I reviewed it, it would be having spent £40 of my own money on it. Not having been gifted the product. So that is obviously... I've not been able to go get my teeth whitened, which I usually would, um, and I'm very, very conscious of them. I've got, and it's just a family trait, it's just inherent. Um, most people in my family have kind of teeth that are on the yellower side naturally, and on top of that, I also drink a lot of Diet Coke, and when I try to cut down my Diet Coke consumption, I replace it with tea, which is arguably slightly healthier for me overall, but not any help, any more helpful really to my teeth. So yeah, I am very conscious of the fact that my teeth have not been professionally whitened in over a year now. So I got that little kit and I'm going to try it out at home. So let me know if you'd like to see um, my results and my thoughts. Later in the month, on the 28th of the month, I spent £12.99 in boots. And again, it was on beauty replacement items. Um, I took a little clip of my Boots haul, which I will insert for you. Boots today, I spent £12.99 all on beauty replacement items. So, number one, £5.99 is the Clairol Root Touch-Up. I think I'm going to vlog trying to put this on and, you know, maybe trying a couple of different colours, trying to find the best sort of match. So, I've had this before, but in a sort of brighter red. This one is for dark auburn slash reddish brown shades. It's just and it's the shade 4R. Then I got the Boots nail polish remover. It says it will take off gel nails. Um, so that was £4. Then I got a four-way buffer thing for helping to take off my gel nails, um, which was £2. And then some cuticle sticks that were a pound. So that was twelve ninety nine exactly in Boots today. Nails and hair stuff basically. I didn't spend anything on miscellaneous services because I didn't take advantage of any miscellaneous services and I didn't spend anything on experiences because all I really did this month was go to work and back so there weren't many experiences to be had. Eating out I spent £43 so that was buying a takeaway so yeah that was one takeaway on the 7th of the month. Basically like my gran and grandpa tend to order in maybe like once a week um, and obviously they, they'll order in for me when they're doing that so I'll kind of pay for it maybe like every sort of third time or whatever just so that I'm taking a turn so £43 was 
not just on food for myself, it was on food, I think it was actually just me and my gran to be fair that time, um, that got stuff, but yeah, it wasn't £43 on some super bougie takeaway all for myself, it was for the family, but it's kind of evened out by the fact that they pay for my food on other days, so I would have probably spent around the same amount if I had paid for my portion of each time that we've eaten out, so £43 all in. Then, as I said, I am back to work at the moment, I'm back in the office and I have spent £60.38 on work lunches since that happened, which I'm not happy about. It's one of those ones in the moment when I'm a bit like, oh, I'm miserable, I don't really feel that I should be in the office at the moment and I'm not happy about being there and like honestly in that headspace, like especially if the guys downstairs are ordering in and they come up and they say, oh, we're doing an order for pizza or we're ordering this or whatever, like the, like a delivery order, do you want anything? I'm just like, yeah, I do. But I need to sort that. That has, like, over £60 when I've been, I've not even been back to work full-time, been back to work full-time for the last two weeks of January, um, but before that I was in, like, kind of two days a week, the other two weeks, so that's not even, like, a full back to work full time one kind of scenario um, so I definitely definitely need to go on that and cut that right back. Then on entertainment and this is a new category for 2021 so last year I took like my Netflix, Amazon Prime, um, Audible, Spotify, Disney Life, all of that kind of all those subscription services I took as not having to come from my budget last year, which this year they do. So I spent £29.97 and that broke down to £4 on my Patreon payment that I make to Lena. Um, Lena Norms just kissed my frog here on YouTube. She just consistently produces excellent content. I've watched her channel for years. Um, and it's, it's kind of just one of those things that I would pay for Netflix or whatever without considering that of course I want to pay for content because it's illegal and it's always been illegal not to pay for like films and TV shows and stuff um, but I'm so used to YouTube content being free and obviously there's channels like, like mine for example where it's just a hobby for people and it's just it's going to only be what they do at their weekends or whatever and it's it's going to remain at that standard because of the restrictions of the fact it is just a hobby and they're doing it alongside working full time um but for the people that have really turned it into a source of income for them um, and I, I believe Lena works alongside her YouTube channel as well which actually in a way just makes it more mind-blowing um but you know she really having watched her for so many years. She's just always made an effort with her content but it's just got better and better. Her editing skills are amazing. You know she really researches her videos. I'm just a big fan and I do, I just kind of got to a point where I was like I should be paying for this content. Like it's of such a standard that you know I'm, I feel I should be paying for it basically. So, so I am a Patreon of Lena and I am going to continue to be a Patreon of Lena. Um, but that was £4 for my January Patreon payment. £8.99 was Netflix, £6.99 was Disney Life and £9.99 was on Spotify Premium. At the moment, like, I cancelled Amazon Prime. So last year I had Amazon Prime as well and I was using Amazon Prime Video, which I've cancelled. If I decide to restart it, it'll be... Oh, guys, do you know I've not even put... £8.99 was Netflix, six. I've spent more than that, I've just realised I've not even put my Audible in there, so £8.99 on Audible. I've just done myself out of £2 because I've added a pound on to Audible and Disney Life. I basically have rounded it up in my head to be the kind of round pound amount rather than being £7.99. I've rounded it up to £8.99, then had 8 in my head and added another 99 on. Um, and I've done the same thing for Disney when I've been writing it down in my diary. So I've technically spent £2 less than I am saying in this video just for clarity. Actually takes my total to 38.96 for entertainment, just as well I'm reporting this back. If I decide to go back to Amazon Prime, it'll turn up in my budget, but I am trying not to go back to Amazon Prime at the moment. 
um, but we will see. But I didn't buy any like individual films or anything and I didn't buy any books this month so that was all my subscriptions basically that added up to £38.96. So that's quite a chunk out of my budget for things that last year didn't come from my budget. Um, I've also got replacements coming from my budget this year so it is even just looking at these figures although this has been a lockdown month and I've not really been anywhere immediately even just my subscriptions that I in the past really haven't even thought like I've almost thought about them as a bill because they come out as a direct debit and I've almost just lumped them in as being like right I need to have this amount available to cover my bills and direct debits but they're not a bill they're an optional thing that I'm choosing to pay for so I'm I obviously made the choice to put them in my budget and be more aware of them this year I definitely got my money out of Netflix. I do use Netflix a lot. And Spotify, I have kind of tried on and off not having premium and I do think, I mean, they do a very good job of making it very annoying to not have premium. What might affect Spotify for me this month is if I decide to buy a treadmill. Because at the moment, Spotify is mainly what I'm listening to when I am going outside and doing either my couch to 5k or doing my walking. I feel like if I buy a treadmill I would be watching it inside and I'd be more likely to put a YouTube video on or even like something on Netflix. So I would really only then be using Spotify on my kind of commute to and from work and sometimes I'm using my Audible in those commutes so potentially if I commit to the treadmill I might stop paying Spotify, pre Spotify premium and might just have normal Spotify and just deal with the adverts for the like sake of my commute there and back in the morning kind of thing but I do find it very irritating particularly if I'm trying to do my couch to 5k when I'm running and I'm reliant on the tempo of the song to keep me running because I'm a terrible runner um so I, d I do think I'll probably pay it in February but it might be something I reevaluate. Audible I definitely I get my money out of. I use my Audible and Disney oh, I can't is it Disney Life or Disney Plus? Like I can't even I can't ever remember which one was the old one and which one's the current one. I don't feel I used that this month and that's partly why I decided to put that into this budget because it will make me reevaluate whether I'm actually using these things that I'm subscribed to. It's an awful lot like censoring around this bloody treadmill, but I feel like if I got the treadmill, you know, like I I am a musical theatre fan and I listen to the Hamilton soundtrack and the Newsy soundtrack quite often when I am running, um, well doing Couch to 5k, I feel like running is not the word for what I do, you know, when I'm jogging along at a certain pace and dying in the process, I tend to listen to musical theatre soundtracks and both those musicals are on that website so I feel like I would maybe watch them if I was on the treadmill so we'll see, we'll see. I don't know but I definitely didn't take advantage enough of my Disney Life subscription last month so yeah that might be one that I kind of start and stop through the year if there's months that I'm wanting to take advantage of it and months that I'm not using it so much because I used it a lot in December. I just didn't use it much in January. Tools for hobbies, I didn't spend anything. Replacements, I spent £22.98 which was on this notebook. It's from Papier and I believe because I bought it I got a code and it's not a blogger code or like a YouTube code or anything. It's just like everyone that buys would get the code um, for £10 off so if it's something that's like kind of limitless I'll link it down below if anybody is wanting anything from Papier and wants £10 off it. But this is a replacement for my bullet journal and um, so this has been finished over many years um, and I do have other notebooks so I did kind of swither about whether I was replacing it but I do really like the bullet journal format in terms of what I use my bullet journal for. Um, so I decided to just get another bullet journal. Obviously this is the Papi take on a bullet journal. It's not the, um, you know, this is the, the official bullet journal that I bought the first time. But it is like the, you know, it's the dotty pages on the inside. Before having a bullet journal I wouldn't have thought made that much of a difference. But it's actually so useful 
um, you know, because you can kind of go either way and it's, yeah, I just really, really like it. So I've got things like my, um, like my habit tracker for February. You know, I can make it into a table, I can just write across it. I really, really like the bullet journal setup actually. I am very much converted. So yeah, although I had other notebooks that I felt I could have potentially used for what I use my bullet journal for, I thought, nah, the bullet journal is the right setup. And I'm taking my replacements from my budget this year, so I feel like that makes it more justified to say this is a replacement and I'm counting it. I'm not taking a free pass on it. Whereas last year my replacements didn't come out of my budget. So I feel like I might have been stingier about this last year because I'd have been like, oh, it's kind of cheating. Whereas I feel like this year I can be like, no, it's not cheating because it's coming from my budget. And it is a replacement. Well, the problem is I started my project pan markings in like one of the last pages in my old bullet journal. So I now need to keep it for a whole year to do that project pan. But that aside, it is a replacement and that will go in the recycling once that project is finished. If you're hearing any strange noises in the background, Sansa is on my bed and she's now giving herself a bath and, you know, ringing her bell and making her presence known. Um, so th that is what that is if you're hearing strange noises. It's my little cat being a, a diva. She's been so quiet, like, the entire time I've been getting ready and then as soon as I actually start filming she's like, well, now I'm going to get up and stretch and clean myself and ring my collar and all of those things. So that gives me a total spend in a month of lockdown of £218.31, pence, which is really quite scary because that's not getting my hair done or my nails done, you know, it's not going anywhere, it's not seeing anyone, that is literally replacing a notebook yes 52.99 on beauty service replacement items was quite a high spend one takeaway my subscription services and buying lunch at work which is the main one that i feel like i want to change but even if i was to say that i was taking the 60 pounds off of that for simplicities let's run it up to 220 I spent £60 so I can take off, I can take that down to £160 basically if I take off my work lunches, um, which still only leaves me £90 unspent of my budget. So it's, I think this year is going to be really challenging in terms of budgeting because so much more is coming from my budget this year. Because last year the entertainment column would have been nothing, whereas this year it was best part of £40. And my replacements would have been nothing, which this has been £23 on that. So that's £63 instantly been added into my budget on things that weren't coming from my budget last year. So yeah, it's quite scary just how quickly that's added up in a month where we have been in lockdown. But at the same time, that's why I'm tracking it, is to really get a handle on that and see just how easily that's adding up. And hopefully that's going to motivate me to budget better and to really be really critical when I'm assessing the likes of those subscription services and whether they are worth being part of my budget. It's left me with a budget unused of 3169 but the last column that's new this year is withdrawals where I can take money unspent out of my budget and put it into my holiday savings account and the reason that I put that in was specifically because we did have 2020 with multiple lockdowns and there was months where I saved money and it rolled over into the next month but it wasn't because I'd made an effort to save it that's specifically why that withdrawal column has been created so I am going to use that and I'm going to take that 3169 which means then that it works out my spreadsheet that I've spent an entire £250 and no budget is rolling over so I will be opening February with a budget of £250 I will not be taking that 31.69 into that so yeah that is my budget breakdown for January I hope you've enjoyed watching this thank you very much for watching it and I will see you in my next video which I believe will be my January haul video where I show you what I bought as my one item in the month of January so I will see you in that video bye